Okay, we're given the graph of a polynomial function. Let's use this graph and come up with a polynomial function itself that would give us this graph. So where I'm going to start on this is I'm going to first identify any zeros or roots or x-intercepts. Those all kind of mean the same thing. So where our graph hits the x-axis. The first one I notice looks to be at negative 1. So I'm just going to kind of list them down below. The next one, it appears we're, we're crossing over right about 2. And then finally, we cross over one more time here at 4. All right, now zeros go hand in hand with factors for a function. So I'm going to call our function f of x. If we have a 0 at negative 1, that means that x plus 1 is going to be a factor. All right, because if I replace the x in this factor with a negative 1, negative 1 plus 1 makes 0. That's why we call them zeros. All right, it's going to have to be x minus 2 for our next factor and x minus 4 for the last one. Now that we have all of that in place, let's next identify whether the graph touches or crosses the x-axis at each one of these. Now at negative 1, the first x-intercept we came to, it looks like we touch. Then we cross at each one of the other ones. All right, now where that helps us is it helps us identify their multiplicities. All right, for each one of these factors, it's going to have an exponent it's raised to. We want to identify exactly what that exponent should be. All right, we call that the multiplicity. All right, so to get there, what we want to do is think when it, when it touches, it's going to be an even multiplicity. When it crosses, it has to be an odd multiplicity. So as far as exponents go on each one of these factors, the even one at negative 1 goes along with that factor x plus 1. I'm going to go with an even number. The simplest is just going to be 2. All right, smallest even number going on there. The other two are a little bit more tricky. This is a fairly difficult problem to come up with those multiplicities or exponents on our factors. These are going to be a little bit different. And why I want to point this out is notice how we cross over the x-axis. These both cross, but they look quite a bit different how they cross exactly. At 2, we're crossing over and hugging in very close to the x-axis going across here whereas we're much more vertical when we're over here at 4. All right, what that tells us about the multiplicities is, yes, they're both odd numbers. We want to use a bigger um, multiplicity or exponent when it hugs in close to the x-axis. So I'm going to go with 3 for the crossing over here at 2, and only 1 for the crossing over here at 4, just because there is such a, a visible difference between these two on the same graph. The uh, more it hugs in close to the x-axis as it crosses over, the higher the multiplicity should be. Now, there is one other piece of information that we haven't taken into account here. All right, we need to make sure that um, we hit the right y-intercept. All right, And to do that, what we need to do is include some sort of number out in front here. I'm going to use a to represent this number. To find what a should be, and it's going to be some, sometimes we call it a scalar, right? It could be positive, maybe it's negative, a whole number, a fraction. We, we don't know just yet. All right, but let's identify the y-intercept, which on this one appears to be a 0, negative 4. So our y-intercept is 0, negative 4. When we plug in an x value of 0, we get a y value or f of x value of 4, negative 4 coming out of the function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace in the function that we're creating, I'm going to replace f of x, the left side, with negative 4. And on the right-hand side, for each one of our x's, I'm going to replace them with zeros. So 0 plus 1 to the second power, 0 minus 2 to the third power, and 0 minus 4. From here, we have an equation that has a bunch of numbers, but only one unknown. We don't know what a is yet. So this will be negative 4 equals, let's work on solving for a. So a little bit of reducing down. We have 1 squared, negative 2 to the third power, and negative 4, just doing 0 minus 4, 0 minus 2, 0, zero plus 1. So negative 4 equals a times what we have 1 times negative 8 times negative 4 or negative 4 equals a 
times negative third or positive 32. All right, to finish this up and get A on one side all by itself, we'll divide both sides by 32. Maybe clean up our answer just a little bit and simplify this down. I believe we get negative one eighth for our value for A. From there, I'm just gonna take that same value back over to the original function we were creating, replace A over here with negative one eighth. Not gonna worry about multiplying that all out or anything like that. There is our function that gives us this graph. Hope this helps out as you're working from the graph of a polynomial function to the function itself. Good luck.